hands down the best update of the game, uh, like of DE entirely. And I hope I hope they have a very similar. Now the ob ob system is really really good. Like it's it's very clean. It it almost always works. Um, you know the re replay system could do work because there's a lot of um playback issues uh with with recorded games but live games live streaming live games is really really good only three minutes behind i really hope um oh same map by the way i really hope that age of mythology has a very similar system because that would that that is what you need for like good casters and people for to, pr to provide good youtube content that's exactly what you need so hopefully because it's based on the same system that they will have everything Age of Empires 3 DE has and more. That's the plan anyway. Your balls start twitching when you see a revolt, but when two revolts is in insta jizz. Oh yeah. It's like um when a nurse, you know, shoves two fingers up your arsehole and hits that G spot, you're just like, oh, oh, oh. just instant orgasm. Okay, let's have a look. So we saw rank two versus rank four last game. Now we're seeing Unger's rank, still rank number two, versus Julian, who is, where's Julian? Is he rank nine, rank eight, rank nine, somewhere like that? Maybe rank six, something like that. Um, so again, yours truly, Unger's. Shaken that fang. Yes, girl. God, you, you'd think I'm so thirsty. I do this about every Explorer skin. I hate to see her leave, but I love to watch her walk away. <laughs> nice. Picking up a... Literally risking it all. That's uh, really brave by him. And um, not something I, I you often see. He, because he has that scout exploring the rest of the map. He uh, knows that there's going to be a big treasure normally. There's going to be a, a, a juicy treasure on this side of the map. Um, so that's an interesting way of exploring. Julian picking up 120 food. That's going to be the two polar bears. But uh, a stand of Saskatoon trees bearing fruit worth 100 food. Uh, that's not going to be bad either. Can we get some Ethiopia gameplay? Uh, there's not. It's, it's one of the rarest sieves. Uh, it's, you very rarely see that sieve played. I think the only the only good... Um, Ethiopia players are Pirashiki King and uh, who's the one that does the Red Sea Wagon stuff? Um, Melancola. They're like the only two decent um, Ethiopia mains. Izad plays, I think Izad and Kevin play the odd Ethiopia game, but yeah, they're quite rare games. So Wait, actually there is 100 food treasure on the north side. Didn't know. Yeah, exactly, Robot. That's a, it's a really good point. I mean, it's such a simple little observation, but um, you know, Generally, though, you want to be in the middle of the map because there's lots of good treasures here. But if you're a Civ that has more than one starting hero or whatnot or a scout, then, yeah, probably worth going over that side of the map. We still have 130 XP in the middle of the map here as well. Um, does Julian see it? Julian does see it. But Ungers doesn't know Julian sees it. But he's the Lakota Explorer, so you've got to kind of realize that, you know, there's a very good chance he does see it. And Ungers, is he going to see those two villagers? I think he will. I think he will. He does. Look at that explore. Ooh. Oh, he did see a fantastic eye there because he was just shift clicking up and down. But he did see that blue dot. He does also see it with his scout. Um, that's interesting. I mean, he could just use his scout and pretend that his explorer didn't see it. So Unger's going for... He's got that starting TP. Now he's got... So unlike last game, he went for starting market. He's now going for starting TP. Going for all the classic upgrades and whatnot. Going to get 125 wood. Perfect amount. And then he's going to get steel traps with that. Let's go look over at Julian. Julian playing uh, his favorite way of playing with the sieve. He likes to get that early war hut down. You know, apply early pressure. Uh, and then TP boom behind it. And so no doubt we will certainly see that uh, build order again. And it's a pretty good TP line map. There's only three TPs, but they're they're very far from the TC. Like the, there's no TC defense for um, the TPs, so very easily pressured and taken down. So from that perspective, it's a, a nice TP line, a nice juicy TP line for TP civilizations. 
Nice. I'm just squeezing in that 130 XP. That is fantastic. And look at that. Boom. Another. Let's have a look at his deck. Does have Wilderness Warfare? Interesting. Lots of resources. Other than that, pretty standard. Pretty standard 1v1 deck. He's going for some starting Musketeers. It's five minutes and he's got some in queue. But five minutes and look at this. Five Clubmen already out with that 30 siege attack. And I think they're going to be able to probably take down this TP before Musketeers can get there in time. And like I said, this is the problem. It's, no, it's not very defensive. Like, it's just such a long way to walk for Musketeers. Especially if it's the, the, the wrong side of the T, TC as well. Just a 5 and Q. Great Coats coming in. Classics, uh, 4 Villagers, followed up by 700 Wood. Behind that, we'll probably see kind of 8 Bows, 700 Gold. Set and Bows coming in. These guys are uh, terrible at fire animation, but they do have a uh, really high damage output. And look at that. Four Axe Riders coming in behind this. So 700 Wood into four Axe Riders. Now he's just going to run around the base. Try and pick off some uh, villagers. Is he going to find anything? He's running into Musketeers. But these Seaton Bows are going to be a pain in the ass. Stagecoach already coming in. Does have his great coat, so unlikely to take down a CDB anytime soon. And now he's got a stagecoach. He's got all of the setup, all of the infrastructure that he needs. And after after that, you know, once he gets that next TP down, which he'll get because of the uh, current TPs he's got are uh, on wood. There we go. Oh, did he just sell a load of wood there for some reason? Some strange reason. Okay, he's going to be diving in. Axe Rider is going to be going for that CDB. Doesn't take it down. He stops the house going up, though. Is that going to be important? Seat and Bow's getting caught really out of place here. Nice! Using one CDB to kill a really low Seat and Bow. That is really nice micro there. Rather than waste uh, TC Fire, which will do 90 damage, that would have been a huge overkill. He just got one CDB snuck out there. Just brilliant micro there by Ungers. And that's the power of high APM and high, high micro. It's the power of France as well. It's like a good, really good bonus for France. He calls back his Explorer, puts it. He flew too close to the sun there, Julian. And the eight bows coming out. It's a really nice timing. Now there's only one Axe Rider, but the Seaton Bows are doing a good job against the Musketeers. And I think that one Axe Rider is just going to survive. He needs to keep switching his Explorer to, to change the Seaton Bows if he wants to keep the Snare on. But Julian's not going to bother at this point. I think he's just going to leave it. Those clubmen up there did some work and took down a house. Some reinforcing bows for Ungers as well. So nice pickup for Ungers. But he does lose some stuff. I'm not sure if he lost any villagers though. He's on 25 at the moment. Three TPs now for Julian. So it's such an insane sieve. Such an insane sieve. <laughs> There's, there is no doubt Lakota needs a nerf. I'd say 9 out of 10 people in this little competitive bubble of ours disagrees with that. <laughs> Lakota are definitely uh, a secret OP sieve. I think Julian Julian likes his uh, native sieves as well. He's very good with... Honestly, I think his best sieve like, is probably Aztec. Like the, the things he does with that Aztec, is just, it just makes Aztec look so OP. Um, he makes Lakota look OP as well. Um, yeah, so. And now the macro for Ungers is really nice on the back of this. He's going for the age up. Can't stay in age two in this match. Uh, needs to get those goons, skirms. Get all that juicy uh, skirm goon goodness. He, he knows that there's free TP booming for Lakota right now. He knows he, he needs to do something about that. So he's going to have to have find a timing here. Siege this forward base down. Follow it up with taking down the odd TP or two. Take them for himself. And that's what his mindset is going to be right now. Right, kill the forward base with Skirm Goon or two Falks, whatever it's going to be. Uh, maybe we'll see early Musk two, ca uh, two Falk. Um, and then he'll transition into Skirm Goon, which I think would be safe. He's going to hit that shipment perfectly. Absolutely perfectly. But Julian's age up behind all of this as well. God, this civilization. Absolute filth. Unger's matching him. 
Gonna be getting that snare back on, and that's the problem with Seton Bows, Seton Bows, whatever you want to call them. They just have to stay there, and he doesn't pick up a villager. He loses some Setons, and yeah, he sees the extra musk coming in, so he's probably going to hazard a guess that it's going to be two Falconets. Which is it going to be two Falconets? Does delay the houses going down though, which is a little bit of a problem. No, it's going to be skirmishers. Uh, that's, I think that's the right play. Because Ungers is probably going to be... There's, there's so much, like, mind games involved right now. There's so much, like, guessing game as well. Like, all right, my opponent sees Musketeers, so he's going to think, oh, I need Siege, so he's going to be two Falconets. Therefore, he'll be countering me with Rifle Riders and Skirms, potentially. So now he, he it's like a double bluff now. So now he thinks I'm going to be going for two Falconets. Okay, now I'm going to go for Skirms instead to counter the Rifle Riders. Uh, nice raiding going up here. Does take down a CDB for once. And uh, that's unfortunate because that house was almost built. Really unfortunate that he didn't get that built. Is going to be sacrificing, potentially sacrificing another village to get that one built. I think he's going to be okay. Skirm's coming in, but there's not a lot of anti-cap here. But once those Axe Riders go down, Skirmishes. Oh, there's an extra two just sneaking in there. Maybe a bit of a CDB pull here. The Skirmishes need to be killing the Rifle Riders because the Rifle Riders do so much damage versus the Musketeers. And the Rifle Riders are papered to the Skirmishers. But there's still a decent mass of skirmishes here as well. And I think it's just kind of a mass over everything else. That kind of uh, quantity over quality here. Uh, are we going to see another CDB go down? No, he's doing a nice, uh, doing a fantastic job microing his CDBs, actually. Finally, he's going to take down Eagle Catchers. Please kill the Explorer. Yes, that's 100 XP. Stop that speed aura boost that it gives. Unbelievably OP. And now it's just Skirm versus Skirm. But oh my goodness me, more Axe Riders coming in there. Elite as well. This civilization just getting away with free TP booming. 28 bills right now. He ne desperately needs some goons. Two Tacola soldiers coming. Three Tacola soldiers sorry, coming in behind this as well. I don't think Ungus has got much anti cap coming in. Minutemen being forced to be called now. Still hasn't used his Minutemen, which is nice. Rifle Rider, a very expensive unit. It does not want to lose them, but I think Rifle Riders are going to be pretty useless right now. Uh, there's, there's, he's not going to be producing any more Musketeers. It's just going to be Skirm Goon right now. So I think we're just going to see Skirm Axe Rider, maybe Skirm Bow Rider. Scores are pretty close with uh, Ungers just about edging it. He's, the scout oh. sees those heavy cab. The Goons are going to try and dive in. Oh. Oh, almost picks up. Almost picks up a skirmisher, uh, sorry, a axe rider for his troubles, but not quite. So Ungus has done a, a fantastic job of securing his herd here, but that's not going to last too long. Does does see this over here, but that's very very risky. But that might be his only option. Might have a problem sieging this stuff down. This mine is his last mine as well before he'll have to push out either here or here. I think that's a much safer option. I think that's definitely where he'll go. He, we did see at the start of the game, he did uh, explore that side of the map. Julian going for a raid. He's going to be picking up a CDB. Nice. Again, using CDBs to finish off one of the heavy cab. Very, very effective. So one CDB does go down, but he's going to lose two cab for it. Potentially more. Okay, just using his goons. That fantastic job. Could have kept pushing with his goons there, actually. Wasn't a lot of a lot of skirms. Could have forced the skirms to try and uh, melee as well. These skirmishers not not uh, particularly that good. Um, Wakina rifles being one of the worst skirmishers in the game. But I think with TP boosts, they're not too bad. Does anyone remember like the TP the TP spam that you used to be able to do? <laughs> I remember at the beginning of Lakota, like you could literally. I remember seeing some Lakotas just have like almost like an infinite amount of TPs, and like <laughs> their units were just impossible to kill. <laughs> and, like whilst they were inside the TPs, it's so dumb. It was so dumb. Like Wakina rifles would have like 500 HP, something ridiculous. It's just hilarious. Two Falconets now come out. So he feels like he's got enough to protect, defend. And, and Skirmish is getting cool for Julian. So Falconets is, is the right play here. And more Wakina Wilders getting made. So two Falconets is the perfect timing for them right now. A load of heavy cab. Is that going to be enough, though? 
Just use your skirmishes and goons to protect those Falconets. Putting his Wakina rifles onto stagger mode just to not take as much damage, and that's going to be really effective. More cab flanking from the south, or from his from his perspective, the north. And I think with that, god damn, these things so tough. Doesn't have any dancing going on either, so there's no like buffs from the uh, the community plaza. Just really nice micro by Julian. Played that perfectly. Takes down a problem, which is the two Falconets. Two Falconets don't even take down the Warheart, which is on 87 HP. That is Heartbreak Hotel. Could you look? It's, oh, God, you really want to just one more Falconet pop. Would have been worth using one extra Falconet pop to kill that Warhurt. And when Julian realizes he's 100% going to be healing that up. Uh, Julian hasn't scouted this side of the map. Um, so he's not going to see anything there. Easy to forget about this side of the map. Very, very easy to forget about this side of the map. And of course, just, uh, just more units coming in. He hasn't even gone for Great Hunter yet. So five more Axe Riders coming in. Great Hunter is going to be an insane card right now if he decides to go for it. It's going to give him 1,350 resources and a 20% food boost. Absolutely insane. Curse Switch coming in now, though. But look at this match from Julian. Corleone. Is there enough goons there to deal with this? Oh, now the community plaza goes down. And look at that. It's got 24 bills on it. And it's given all units buff of damage by 26%. Just instantly bust that community plaza down. And look at these things. 55 hand attack. It's just not fair. It's just not fair. Oh, that is just insane. Oh, man, that is just insane. <laughs> oh yes julian sees that over there goes and looks over the gold mine easy raid five villages down just like that cavalry combat coming in i mean i mean surely surely great hunter is the play here surely i mean you, you, what does that give you does it give you the food back 10% of all food you have gathered. I mean, that that gives that gives you the instant big button right there. That gives you the instant big button right there. And just like that, Ungus calls the GG. Lakota. Lakota. Yeah, we need to talk. We need to talk about this. Here. <laughs> double double steel traps and 1.5k food. Yeah. It's not like you have to gather the food either. It's just like one of those cards that instant stockpile cards. So it's just, it's even more insane. Yeah. 40 bills, free TP stagecoach the entire game. Ungus couldn't do anything about it. And uh, even though Ungus had some fantastic micro there, this Civ man, this Civ man. I mean, his, his, he did have the option of, of potentially trying to, like, uh, bow pike rush here. Uh, and, 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 you know, knowing Julian likes to be this greedy, like, maybe, maybe like, a bow pike rush could be the play. But other than that, GG were played. Look at that. Julian, Lakota, even though they have better units, being able to out-eco. This Civ, man. This Civ is scary. Well played.